President Museveni, who was in company of the first daughters, uh, Miss, Mrs. Natasha Museveni Karujire, re-emphasized his call for value addition to Uganda's raw material like minerals. He said when minerals are exported unprocessed, Uganda loses a lot of revenue and other benefits that could steer the country's social economic transformation. Now, President Yorim Museveni has contributed 30 million shillings in cash towards the construction of a Balang Centre charge in Kalachi district. And called upon Christians to carry each other's burdens. Uh, the fundraising occasion presents, uh, presented to all of us as a challenge and a call for us to carry each other other burdens or each other's burdens and service by giving part of our proceeds to God. everything is a battle because you have got ignorant people sitting in office when i insisted on the on the processing of milk <laughs> the vets told me that no but i cannot cannot look after frisian cows they can i said why not I said they can it was a big war to to to, to introduce the the, the dairy enterprise in the villages. So when it came to minerals, that's when we, 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 we told them that if you do not want to add value here, we shall not allow you. We shall not allow you to export. And we banned, I banned all the exports of unprocessed minerals. Let the minerals stay in the ground. They have been there for millions of years. If the present leaders are stupid, they can't see what, how to do it. Let them stay there. When, when, when more intelligent people come, they will, they will, I will not be part of the crime of stealing people. Yeah. Uganda now gets three times more money on the, on the issue of tin than it was getting. But secondly, because of this processing, which is here, jobs are created here now. If the stones had been taken out, these jobs here in Riti would be <laughs> in Canada or somewhere else. Now these jobs are here. So these children are getting jobs. This, this young man who is doing the factory, so he's paying, he's paying, he has paid the miners, Baba Ganaho, he's now paying the employees, the workers here, now Baba Ganaho, Asante. But that's not all. When the factory is here, he cannot use his electricity from Canada. He has got to buy our electricity. And he pays for it. Uh, Your Excellency, I want to thank the communities where these investors are operating from. From what I have picked, Woodcross is in good books with the surroundings. Thank you so much. Thank you, the local leaders. Please continue encouraging the communities to support this kind of development. You have already enumerated the advantages of having 
such developments in our areas. I will not enumerate further. So the regulations are out. What I am remaining with your excellency is to organize the artisanal miners who used to come to State House all the time complaining. We have listened to them. The areas of Mubende Chisita, we are just concluding the regulations for the artisanal miners so that I can give them the artisanal mining licenses and they are all calm. And you will not hear quarrels and battles that you used to hear from the artisanal mining areas. They have to use our geologists. Every group must have a geologist attached to make them appreciate how mining is done to be able to respond to the environmental requirements. That decision by yourself made us go down the path of establishing this refinery as you see it today. We met you in State House in August 2022, and we promised you that we would build this facility. I'm proud to be standing with our partners at the Ministry of Energy and Mines, led by Honorable Madame Ruth, to confirm to you that we fulfilled the promise that we made to you in August two years ago. If you look at the supply of tin globally, it's been concentrated in the hands of five or six countries for the last decades. Those countries include China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Peru, and Brazil. What's happened over the last few decades is all of these countries are struggling to bring product to market. Well, now the brewery sector has urged Parliament to halve the excise duty tax on imported and locally produced spirits remain as it is because the 20% increase in tax bills will make the product unaffordable to consumers, hence the reduction in volumes of sales. Stakeholders of this sector had appeared before the Finance Committee uh, of Parliament to present their concerns on tax amendments. Stakeholders in the breweries sector, led by the Managing Director of Uganda Breweries Limited, Andrew Kilonzo, have appeared before the Finance Committee of Parliament to give their input on proposed tax bills and rates for financial year 2024-2025. Number one is that is locally produced, locally produced of alcoholic strength by volume of less than 80% to be charged excess at a rate of 60% or Uganda shillings, 2,000 per litre, whichever is higher. And on the importation is that that is imported of alcoholic strength by volume of less than 80% to be charged excess at a rate of 80% or Uganda shillings, 1,500 per litre, whichever is high. Breweries argue that the expected increase in government revenue with a 20% tax increase on both locally manufactured and imported spirits will not materialize since the products will be unaffordable to customers. They emphasize that tax should be on productive cost, not margin. We also have seen uh, about 31 members of the association closing businesses because, again, of how this tax is applied. So it kind of um, affects first um, the margins. And on the new proposed bill, it will be 100% and 10,000 shillings a litre is to implement what the rest of the world does is to just have a flat rate per litre on wines as well. The new authority is taxing excess duty tax on, on both margin and production costs. So we pray that the tax be applied per litre of, of ready to drink spirits. You say now we don't want 100, just 5 breso, but also now go back to 1,500. Don't you think that you could have proposed something that is uh, middle. Some asked the committee to also consider the aspect of value-added tax to have the 18% reduced to 16% since Uganda is operating in the East African community. According to some members of parliament, demand for alcohol is inelastic and increase in excise duty will lead to a decrease in consumption. Therefore, we would have actually maybe 
told us that if it has elastic demand and its demand is affected by price, what happens when you reduce the price? Would you make more sales? Yes. Would government correct more taxes? Yes. So, so by increasing the, the, the cost, the price, you increase the tax, you increase the cost of manufactured products that the members here are manufacturing, you will push consumption into that informal, where there is no tax collected. So we are saying there is going to be a, a reduction in tax. Because the manufacturer's sector has expressed concern over the 5% tax on non-assets and on the fruits and beverage juice. They propose that in order for the agricultural sector to grow, the power content of the bottle be increased from 30% to 50% local content. It is well. Yeah, yeah. But this is where every Ugandan invest, every Ugandan invest, and we are just learning to come into business. If you start taxing at 5%, you're going to carry this. Mm -hmm. Increase the pulp content from 10% to 30%, it ceases to be a juice. It goes to another category, could be a nectar or something else. The cost of production, of producing that bottle, will triple or quadruple. This law, the amendment has been worded, it is requiring us to increase the amount of pulp, which is not viable. James Kanakulia Molondo, a member of the Casita board, said the 0.5% excise duty introduced on cash withdrawals will affect the cost of doing business. Knowing how, uh, how uh, the cost of uh, doing business and living is really uh, affecting us, we are looking at it as an incumbent and a drawback which, which can really, in the long run, affect the general performance of the economy. I'm Navka Farida and Gloria Guitabinji in Parliament. Thank you very much there, Namfuka Farid. And now celebrations for Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Motebi, the second 69th birthday continues with different activities so far covered uh, with Muslims conducting prayers uh, this Friday. Official celebrations by the Adventist Church are set for Saturday at Seventh-day Adventist Church in Najanankumbi. <laughs> Thirteenth of April marks Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutebi the second's birthday. Born in April 1955 at Mulago Hospital to Sekabaka Mutesa II and Namasole, Queen Mother Naulesar Sosonkole of the Anchima clan, the young boy was destined for greatness. At the time of his birth, his father, the late Saedward Mutesa II, was in exile in Britain due to the then political unrest in Uganda. During His Majesty's formative period, he attended Budo Junior School. As a young prince, he was introduced to culture, exposition of the Baganda by staying in homes of prominent chiefs for some time and also had private tuition at his father's palace. He later left the country for the United Kingdom for further studies and upon completion, he worked as a journalist taking on the position of associate editor at the African Concord magazine. He was enthroned as the 36th Kabaka on the 31st July 1993 and is currently the longest reigning monarch of Uganda Kingdom. Key highlight of Kabaka Mutebi's reign is unity of the kingdom that everyone prides in. Kabaka Mutebi has encouraged Ugandans to be hardworking, equal allowing the kingdom to create different business ventures to generate income. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank God who has kept our king up to 69 years of life and when he's do, still strong and can manage to rule the kingdom. Secondly, I will thank President Kabuta Yumi Seveni, 
who returned to the kingdom and supported the kingdom since it started on the coronation. He was with us on the wedding of the king. He was with us. Just like this year's birthday celebration theme, where the fight against HIV and AIDS is on the agenda, the Kabaka was appointed as the UNAIDS Goodwill Ambassador for the Ending AIDS Among Men in Eastern and South Africa, with a special focus on the Buganda Kingdom in Uganda. The major factor that's going to determine social and economic transformation is the health of especially the ordinary person. Because it's the ordinary person that contributes significantly to the growth of any country. We therefore join the efforts of the international community, UNAIDS, Uganda AIDS Commission, and all people involved in promoting our health in the fight against HIV AIDS. And we should all be happy because the Kabaka is the goodwill ambassador for the African continent. Kabaka Mwena Mutebi has always engaged in different diplomatic activities, cultural exchange, with other leaders ensuring that his subjects prosper, live healthy lives, get good education, and maintain the kingdom's autonomy and cultural identity with the nation's broader national framework. <laughs> Now getting back uh, to the presidential press unit and of course uh, being represented by the vice president, President Yori Museveni has contributed 30 million shillings in cash towards the construction of Abalanga Centre. Uh, that is a church in Kalachi district, and he called upon Christians to carry each other's burdens. The fundraising occasion presents to all of us a challenge and a call for us to carry each other's burdens in service by giving part of our proceeds to God. Mr. Mseveni said this in a speech delivered for him by the Vice President Major Jessica Alupo. Uh, the president said, gone are the days when the church was fully dependent on believers for survival of its leaders and the welfare of the church activities. From, the, it's, from its inception up to today, this occasion presents to all of us a challenge and a call for us to carry each other's burden in the service by giving part of our proceeds to God. Gone are the days when the church was fully dependent on the believers for the survival of its leaders and the welfare of church activities. I am optimistic that this project of our focus today will reduce the dependency of the church on the faithfuls. The big turn up at this fundraising event is a testimony for your resolve to positively contribute to the advancement of the church and Uganda in general. Since 1986, we have been struggling with economic recovery expansion, diversification, and transformation. Although the country has been faced with economic shocks, household businesses have responded positively to government investment in especially infrastructure and the various wealth creation initiatives. This means that the government's effort to create wealth at household level is taking root. We are registering progress in the initiatives that we created to help elevate our people and eradicate poverty from households. I believe we shall have a magnificent church in the near future to serve the community better. I would like once again to sincerely thank the Right Reverend Kosea Odongo and Lieutenant General Peter Elwelu for the invitation accorded to me and for organizing this momentous occasion. Finally, 
I call upon our friends and all the people of goodwill to support this noble cause of fundraising for a Balang Center Church. And always remember that God loves a cheerful giver. I salute you all and wish you a fruitful fundraising. I thank you. <laughs> On top of this message, Lord Bishop, which I have presented to you, with his contribution of 30 million Uganda shillings. Papa is a I can only present in him Papa Kilitutu Bishop of Miyuni Kaisaoni. Your Excellency, we welcome you to Abalang Church of Uganda. This parish is the newest parish in the diocese. Also, take our appreciation to him for the support with which he supports us as the Church of Uganda Diocese of Soroti whenever we call upon him to support. Take care of Papa is of our kind. <laughs> Tell his excellence that we appreciate his support very, very much, and we don't take it for granted. Oh, we welcome our visitors to be here with us. We welcome Quite interesting there, and of course for a good cause, now the First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, Mrs. Janet Museveni, has welcomed the program by the African Centers for Lightening and Education Network, ACLANET. The program aims to implement lightening protection in schools to meet international standards, reduce deaths, injuries, and property damage caused by lightning strikes. The announcement comes during a meeting where the first lady held with a team from Aklanate, uh, led by the founding director, Professor Emerita Mary Ann Cooper, a retired professor of emergency medicine at the University of Illinois, uh, Chicago. <laughs> The announcement came during a meeting that the First Lady held with a team from Aklanet, led by the founding director, Professor Emerita Mary Ann Cooper, a retired professor of emergency medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago. The visit aimed to update the education minister on their work in Uganda and to discuss their proposed collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Sports to mitigate lightning hazards in schools. These people are trying to save our children, at least initially, and we are charging them for giving us a service. Let's begin there, if they can give them that tax free. Thank you. Thank you. Then we will start talking about how we can uh, facilitate their, their campaign, if you like, <laughs> yes. to educate or people about how they can save themselves. So we'll try to do everything we can do uh, before you leave, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll continue to move step by step. But at least let's start with Revenue Authority, and then we'll see, we'll discuss how we can support a whole campaign, which we can also be involved. It's a real yeah, okay. honor and pleasure that you should bring us this program that really will save the lives of our children and our people. So I can't thank you enough and I'm honored to meet you and thank you on behalf of the country, Uganda, and on behalf of the Minister of Education. According to Aklinet, lightning is the most common weather threat to life globally, often encountered daily. Research indicates that Uganda experiences 2 million lightning strikes annually, with the majority of reported victims being school children as they are gathered in large groups in school buildings that are not adequately protected from lightning. Many schools in Uganda currently use outdated, untested technology for lightning protection, which often fails to meet standards and protect students as evidenced by students' fatalities across the country. We've been serving the country of Uganda for 10 years, Aklanet has been. 
We've mostly been protecting schools, but I hope for the next 10 years, we're aiming at doing public education. When we go out to these districts where we've protected the schools and meet, we meet with the district officials, they beg us for education. They say, tell us what we can do. Tell us so that we can educate our people, so that we can protect our children. And so that's what we're hoping to do. And that's why we're meeting with you, Mama. Through donations and partnerships, Ackland has protected various schools in Uganda, including Runyanya Primary School in Chirandongo, Rockview in Tororo, Palebek SS in Lamo, Magoyo P7 School in Yumbe, Sean Primary School in Chankwanzi, Nkurunjiyo Primary School in Chisoro, and Brambe Primary School in Bushenyi. Reporting for UBC, Bagma William. And in the financial sector, the anti-corruption court, uh, sorry, in court, anti-corruption court has remanded three employees of Equity Bank Uganda to Lizida Prison, charged with one count of conspiracy to fraud their employer of 62 billion shillings uh, through causing disbursements to unsecured loans uh, of unsecured loans to disqualified clients. The matter was before Grade 1 Magistrate Albert Asimai. Your Honor, for the record. The three accused persons are cut off Fred, head of SMEs at Equity Bank, Mugumi Robert, a businessman, and Mkwaya Godfrey, all charged with one count of conspiracy to defraud Equity Bank of over 62 billions through disbursement of unsecured loans to unqualified clients and count four we shall the interest of time restrain ourselves to reading the account that the three uh added accused persons uh, face charged with but uh, for purposes of avoidance of any doubt i want to remind the three added accused persons that you are charged together with other five accused persons Prosecution led by Raymond Mugisa told court that inquiries in this matter are still ongoing. Court before Grade 1 Magistrate Abate Asimwe remanded the accused persons to Rizida Government Prison until 22nd May 2024. The accused were advised to apply for bail in High Court. Since the anti-corruption court has no power to listen to this case, it's alleged that the accused persons between 2021 and 2024 at Equity Bank headquarters at Church House in Kampala and Wakiso District, conspired and gave out loans of over 62 billions to unqualified clients. Meanwhile, the anti-corruption court is still proceeding with the hearing of the case where Opio Innocent is charged with issuing an illegal diplomatic note to 11 non-state officials. Prosecution led by Nelly Asiku produced the fifth witness to court to testify against the accused in this matter. The witness was the permanent secretary of Minister of Foreign Affairs, Vincent Bajiro Waswa, who says that Opio Innocent had to follow guidelines that govern government entities. During However, the witness had a tough time during cross-examination from the defense lawyers. The chief of protocol and raised a concern on the diplomatic notes. that we had. It's alleged that between 2018 and 2022, Opio Innocent, who is accused of abuse of office, illegally issued two diplomatic notes recommending nine set of to the American Embassy for acquisition of a visa. Rebecca Natongo, Susan Inabugude, UBC News. Now, after two days of deliberation in Parliament, the impasse surrounding the complete renovation of Mandela National Stadium, Nambole, has been resolved. As we hear more from John Van Sentum. During plenary on Thursday, the public learned of Mandela National Honorable Stadium's Amanda. unavailability for two World Cup Who qualifiers in June. This raised a debate and climax with the speaker and it among tasking State Minister for Sports Pito Gwang to provide a status report and accountability for the 97 billion shillings allotted for the stadium's renovation. Friday morning found the State Minister for Sports Pito Gwang on the floor of Parliament. His defense pinned Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for failure to release the 17 billion shillings balance needed for the final touches of the first phase. Right, Honorable 
Street and colleagues. Once the Ministry of Education and Sports receive the requisite funding, our priority shall be to work on areas that were highlighted as a necessity during the recent CAF inspections, which were funded and invited by the Ministry of Education and Sports, so that we comply with the requirements to host the upcoming World Cup qualifier in June 2024, African Championship, and the AFCON 2027. At this stage, the speaker, Anita Among, called for an adjournment that lasted about 10 minutes to allow Minister of Finance representation on the floor of Parliament. I've just had a discussion with my senior, Honorable Matia Kasaija, on the issue of the balance of 17 billion shillings. Uh, the 17 billion shillings should actually not be a problem. Uh, I want to commit uh, to this country that, uh, and Parliament that the 17, 17 billion shillings, which is a balance of the 97 billion shillings that was recently approved, uh, will be made available. The two parties were allowed by the Speaker to go trigger transfer of funds, which they confirmed to Parliament during the afternoon session. I'm happy to report that uh, uh, when I went back, I confirmed that the process was already underway. And uh, indeed, this morning, the Accountant General had uh, pulled the the accountant general had pulled the trigger, releasing 17.76 billion shillings. I want to request you, right on the speaker, that this afternoon, myself, the contractor, and the consultant, with your permission, I was formally going to ask you. Can I give you my representative? I have no problem. We have a meeting at Nambole to specifically address issues which have been raised by CAF. We want to come up with a work plan for completion of those identified issues so that the stadium is ready. The speaker who has tasked delivery of a tangible project in a fortnight is tentatively planned to visit the stadium on Monday. We want that place in two weeks time. Mandela National Stadium Nambole is undergoing renovation by the Uganda People's Defense Forces Engineering Brigade. And I want to take this opportunity to apologize for the delay. But now we all know why we've been delayed. It's meant to be available for the coming qualifiers to enable Uganda cranes play at home again with hope for better results. Now, when eight extra municipalities were listed to benefit from the additional funding phase of Uganda's support to municipal infrastructure development, Mwende did not miss out. It became part of a cluster five, which also included Masaka City and Entebbe municipalities, some of the original 14 municipalities that benefited from the first phase of OSMED. Let's hear more from Henry Okrood. Somewhere in central Uganda sits Mubende Municipal Council, one of the local government administrative units making up West Buganda sub-region. Seen here, our pedestrians comfortably going about their business. They are trekking on walkways, recently installed on the roads in the municipality. These are part of a World Bank funded project, Uganda Support to Municipal Infrastructure Development, USMIT. Most of the roads in town have been sealed using these resources, not only being sealed, but we have also accommodated and created other arrangements which create a very good town order. We have the walkways such that the people who are walking are not competing with the vehicles on the carriageway. From just one upgraded street of less than a kilometer to about 8.5 kilometers of roads, restoration of order in the municipality 
is on course. We have created the solar lights. These enable people to move freely with a lot of security at night. But these ones have also improved on what we call night economy. Our people have started working at night. We encourage youth and disadvantage to bring their items at night to sail along those solar poles such that in the morning they wind up whatever they are doing and go back home. So many people are very pleased with this and it is changing their lives. This positive highlight is not a claim but an affirmation of reality. Reality that people residing and operating in the municipality positively attest to. This is not all. The progress on the construction of a new market is promising. It stands at 64% and a lot is expected upon completion. People are waiting for the opening of this market because we demolished the old one which was too small and I will speak now, this one is going to accommodate a lot of people because the, the previous one had only 65 people selling raw food. This time we are going to have 165. That means there is an increment. It had 64 lockups. This one has 280 lockups. The developments have not only been confined in Mubende municipal area. Masaka City initially benefited from the first phase of USMIT while still a municipality. Upon successful implementation of the projects, it was considered for additional funding under the same cluster. On ground is evidence of progress. Apart from the roads, it has gone ahead to put lights. All walkways have lighting systems. So in addition to that, we are saying even the landlords should light the buildings. And once that is done, it will be standard. The rehabilitation of 0 0.166 km on Kochi Street, 0 0.862 km on Elgin Street, Kampala Road, Nyendo Market, 0 0.823 km on Sachura Road, and 0 0.3 one zero kilometer on Nyendo Market Loop have been successful. This has seen Masaka resurrect from the unofficial and unfair status of a ghost city. Those who were here 10 or 5 years ago are amazed by the transformation, the infrastructural development in this city is amazing. The road network today in Masaka City. You would wish that part of Masaka City is in the capital state of Uganda. This kind of success has not left Entebbe municipality the same. The international gateway to and from Uganda has seen interconnecting roads worked on. The longest road has been Kampala Road. And we have also Church Road. Those are the long roads that we have done. And the Ginger Road. Those are quite uh, long roads that we have, we have done. But like I said, they have interconnecting roads. And uh, uh, about other smaller roads connecting to them. Because the, the principle in Yusmin has been connectivity. You cannot construct a road which is floating. It has to be connecting to another road. Being one of the busiest towns in Uganda, Having such developments put in place is worth the effort from USMID. The development of the taxi park was in, in two phases. 
So phase one did ground floor and first floor, but uh, we, we, we decided as council to add another floor for future business space. When you look at the roads, we have Ginger Road, one of the most recent road, uh, which has been under this project of USMID. It's, it's appreciated by the community, it has lights, and it is also one of the, uh, what I could say, the modern and also meeting the standards of our municipality in uh, Division B. But also other divisions have also been able, and villages, to get those roads. The USMID additional funding phase being implemented by the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development ends in June 2024. Government is in the process of seeking another phase of funding, which if successful will run from 2025 to 2030. Henry Okrut, UBC. Friendly, friendly! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just a capillary loan of 200 you get to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The bank commander, not the bank tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tinge. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived identical twins who gave birth to beautiful princes and princesses. Their mothers gave their babies' bodies a lot of care by applying on their skin with baby junior jelly. <laughs> so try their targets and everyone would admire their glowing skin. Fun fact, baby junior prevents diaper rash, dry and sensitive skin. Mom's all over Africa, baby junior jelly, baby junior's the skin. No. Fifi, how are you? I'm fine. Bambi, eh? whenever I eat chips and chicken, mm -hmm. I feel stomachache, joint pain, and body weakness. My dear, go to MX Nutrition Center hey. and learn the best food for your body hmm. and get treatment according to your blood group. Are you sure? Yes. By the way, do you know your blood group, genotype, and how much you need to exercise? Come to Timex Nutrition Center for professional advice on how to manage your health and immune boosting. At Timex, we treat diseases like diabetes, arthritis, ulcers, obesity, pressure, and many more. For details, find us at our headquarters in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor. We also have a branch in Barara. Or call us on 0758 819952 or 0778 288361. Timex, be your own doctor. The Government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the Chief Administrative Officers, City Mayors, Resident City Commissioners, City Clerks, City and Division Councillors, Wards and LC Chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the National Population and Housing Census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1. How many we are, 2. Where we are, 3. How we are living, 4. What we own and 5. Where we access services from. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua, Fort Porto, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala, comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, 
please call 0755-342-128 or 0773-342-128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Welcome back from that short break into the world of business. Government is threatening to withdraw the land, withdraw land from investors at Namanve Industrial Park who have not developed their portions of land for the last five years. State Minister for Investment and Privatization, Evelyn Anete, says such delays deny the country avenues to avail employment opportunities to the jobless youth. The investors spoke. What ails them? From corruption and fraud, masterminded by middlemen, to delays choreographed by some government agencies. When we go to URA to get our our VAT deferment, they say for Ugandans you need a, there's a threshold of hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. We are soon opening up. I'm in food industry. But uh, we are going to lose our very expensive investment because of dust. We request Lagando to speed up their work. Government was already aware of some of these challenges. State Minister for Investment and Privatization, Evelyn Anite, affirmed this. I am told that the unscrupulous people here in my, the management of Uganda Investment Authority that they are very unscrupulous when they see you just finish back feeling like this they go and report and your land is withdrawn from you before your lease expires this also explains the reasons behind the establishment of the state house and corruption unit and the state house investors protection unit both brigadier henry isoke and colonel edith nakarema were present Many times people have been frustrated, especially the investors. They've gone to some of these offices and they've not got help. We are there and we have handled many cases. General Kabutam 7 instructs us on a daily to ensure that every investor, every warrior creator, both foreign and domestic, are well protected, well supported, and effectively coordinated, and so we are here to show ourselves to you. This assurance is complementary to the fact that government is in the process of amending the Investment Code Act. It is meant to eliminate middlemen and corruption. And this has been directed by the president and uh, to make it very criminal for middlemen, uh, asking for contingency, asking for money for facilitation, for services which are being provided by government which are for free. Our work is to ensure that we directly deal with investors in the government uh, or the investors are supposed to reach, to reach us or us reaching out to investors to ensure that we eliminate the fraudsters who pretend to be the, the coordinators in between the so-called middlemen or middlewomen. However, investors also have to prove their worth to avoid losing land allocated to them. Now those of you who know that you have fenced the fence, uh, your land and it is in the fence that has stayed for five years and you're still in the fence, we're going to withdraw it. Why? Because we cannot wait for you. You've told us you have the money to develop the land. So you cannot wait for five years and you're not developing the land. And yet we have a very good guidance for you. The Friday Baraza at Namambe Industrial Park saw both local and foreign investors air out their concerns. Henry Okrut, UBC. Yeah. 
Now, some happenings with NSSF, the National Social Security Fund, and UEP Old Mutual Uganda recently conducted financial literacy education for Ugandans. This initiative comes as a response to the realization that many people mismanage their retirement benefits uh, leading to wasted funds. Gerald Casato, the Deputy Executive Director of NSSF, emphasized the importance of conducting research and gaining knowledge about investment opportunities before committing the funds. Yeah, we will there are a couple of diseases these days that actually The reality of retirement, the way I understand it, is that you transition to something. Maybe you've been a teacher and you get to get your farming. Maybe you've been an engineer and you're giving back your knowledge in terms of uh, you know, helping others in education. So it doesn't mean that you have to stay at home and basically wake up to doing nothing. You need to now to work with our members and savers while, I mean, while they are still actively saving, such that by the time they get the money that they are entitled to receive with the fund, they are, they are empowered to make better decisions. Terry's, one of the things that we've identified is that they receive their benefits and they, they make the wrong investments. And it's important, for example, not to get into an investment that you have had no prior knowledge to, a business that you have not operated in previously, because when you get into this in your retirement and you put all your funds in it, there's a possibility that it will not succeed and uh, this will deplete your benefits that you have gained from the fund. And so we have solutions under our investment arm, such as I mentioned the unit trust, where you um, put in an investment and you receive interest on a daily basis and on a monthly basis as well. In terms of insurance, it's important to protect your assets. So for example, we have motor comprehensive insurance, which covers um, your car comprehensively. So Please stop using the word retirement. That word in itself connotes an end of life. <laughs> Please stop using it. Find another word to describe what happens when people leave from employment. Because if you look at me now, I look much better than all of you who are in employment. I'm not, I, I, I'm not in, the, and I'm actually a lot busier than I was. So I'm not retired by any measure of that word. Retirement is an old concept from the industrial world of the Western world. Yabana Masumero, Pipite, Kuka Rubin is an Akatono, and Oximba Nirid in Pamfu, Kerukripa and Okabi Buka. Smoya Kuzunga and a banker sipsi. Katio Sumuro Kusasura School of Fisomanao, Ateno Colonavira and Toko, Kusimuye Yongaro, Isukola Changunio, Nigaunista, and Mukaga Tano, Sta Munana Not Hash, who could never could get it to a who was the Apia empty and Momo. Katio Kulachu Wali Ru. MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited, a room is my bank and crew Uganda. After the massive launch of the Seven Hour Warm Hip Song in Kololo, Mukono, Nabweru Wakiso District and Masuli Tawas Zone, Munama Sakansereko Emma, text Musevena Warm to Mitiana on Friday, the 26th of April 2024 at Mitiana Saza Ground. We shall start with Burundi 1C, a health camp, and then a boom of entertainment with thousands of comedians and artists all at a free entry. Anti Jaja Gabude, His Excellency Yori Kagutam Seveni, will be our chief guest. Come, let's have fun with Jaja. Don't miss. <laughs> And into the world of sports, the Patriotic League of Uganda is committed to empower uh, the development of talents among Ugandans. The pledge was made by Maiko Nwajira, a.k.a. Toyota, at the quarter-finals, uh, the, the Games of Uganda Informal Sector Tournament at Nachivobo Blue Primary School. Other supporters of the Patriotic League of Uganda applauded the group's efforts to empower Ugandans. The main intention is to develop talent 
so that uh, even those who did not uh, make it to school can be able to sustain themselves and their families through football. They can, we are praying and everybody is watching internationally and even here on national TV. So people have a chance and uh, to show their, to, to have an opportunity even to play in uh, Uganda cranes. Thank CDF for putting in money to see that he promotes the talents. You know, a talent, someone can eat from a talent. Someone can build himself or herself on a talent. So we, we cannot take it for granted, just a talent. But a talent, you have to get someone to, to, to bring that talent out of you so that you may shine. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and allowing us into your space. My name is Patricia Lukoma Mpango. It has been a pleasure, but let's meet again at 10 o'clock. Motion Pictures brings you Duko Pamoja, a documentary film about our unity as Ugandans and Africans. Bunyoro would have simply created an East African community that we are looking for today. The rulers of Bunyoro are actually Luos. We people who live across the Nile, we are so related from our myth or from just the Nile. We are the same people and genetically we are even the same people. We are similar people. We are one. Pamoja, we are one. Use that word, Pamoja. Premiering every week from 3rd February to June 2024 at the National Theatre and Indere Center. Daily screenings are from 4th February to June 2024 at Ham Cinemax and the National Theatre. To get a ticket, call 0778-787-660. Tuko Pamoja? This week on UBC. Mom! It's the freak himself, DJ Sun. DJ Sun is the problem. Oh my God! that our number one value as a nation is to respect and protect the environment? With the current population increase of Uganda and industrialization, this has increased pressure on the natural resources resulting into environmental degradation and global warming. Developing countries like Uganda could face 80% of the global climate change effects by the year 2030 if no action is taken. Join us here on UBC TV, Inspiring Uganda, on our Echo Plus program, where we bring you an in-depth analysis of issues that are disastrous to our environment. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., only on your loved station, The National Broadcaster. UBC, Inspiring Uganda.
Yes, a very good evening to you tuned into UBC TV. We thank you so much for following all our work. And I warmly welcome you to this week's edition of One on One with Michael Jordan Lukomwa. Like I always say, we discuss variety. But we continue with the celebration of our mothers, our sisters. And we continue to say that you're all beautiful and we love you, our women. Now, this time the discussion about you, our women, we are bringing it here at the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. They have an arrangement for mothers and women and children because of course all of us that have ever been children we were once directly under the care of a mother or a lady somewhere somehow so they have a whole secretariat uh, for women and children here at the uganda muslim supreme council as we wind up with the celebrations of the women we thought about coming to talk to them about how they are looking at the situation of the woman in uganda and what kind of arrangements do they have our guest is Shekhat Radia Namakula. She is uh, the Secretary for Women and Children Affairs, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. Shekhat, oh, yes. I, I normally call you Hajat. I'm Shekhat. <laughs> <laughs> An acquired title. Okay. So a Shekhat trains like a Sheikh. Oh, yes. He's a female Sheikh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So how have you been? We last talked to you. Around okay, COVID, <laughs> so we I thought and said, okay, right. there is a secretariat for women. As we wind up this celebration of women, uh, we must talk to you. So, how have you been ever since then as the secretariat for women? Secretariat, Alhamdulillah, Salat was Salam ala Rasulillah. Uh, it has been a while <laughs> since we last talked about this, yeah. and uh, we are doing well generally. We are moving on. Our motto is unity and development. We develop every other day. I want to congratulate everyone out there, not only women, but everyone uh, on this uh, Women is uh, Week or Women is Month. Alhamdulillah for, for 2024. Women in Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, uh, we are doing well. Uh, we have done a lot of things. We support 